So here we are at Pilot Careers Live with Gabriel and Sam, who are on the MPL course with CAE. And I'll start with you, Gabriel. I understand you were here a year ago at Pilot Careers Live looking for information about your possible career. Yeah, I was. I was here a year ago tomorrow, as it turns out, as a prospective cadet, looking around all the stands. I'd already signed up to do the ATPL with CAE, but EasyJet hadn't opened their course yet. So I was still looking around at all the options I had, asking when EasyJet would open up their course, um, all the usual stuff. So I was, I was really lucky that they opened it in March. So, um, yeah. so why did you choose the MPL? Well, I chose it primarily because it's um, as close as you can get to a fixed job at the end of it. I know there are advantages to doing the ATPL over the MPL. You've got more choice, you're not tied to a certain airline. But I looked at that and I looked at the risk and I thought I'd rather, I'd rather just go down the MPL route. So. And Sam, why did you choose MPL? Uh, so originally I was going to be on the ATPL at CAE and um, they contacted me to say that um, the MPL had opened up after being closed for COVID. So I was actually in the first interview group that they had done since 2019, I believe it was. Um, and I looked at the pros and cons of both courses. I looked at the ATPL. There's uh, advantages to the ATPL, there's disadvantages. The same with the MPL, there's advantages and disadvantages. I think one of the main things for me was a job at the end of it. So provided you pass all of your exams and you get through flight school, you have that job at EasyJet and there's going to be a minimal gap between starting at EasyJet and finishing at CAE. Whereas with an integrated course, you may have up to a year where you're jobless searching for a job and you get skill fade over time. So your flying might not be up to when you um, finish at CA originally. Um, so I think the MPL is great because you go seamless transition straight into the airline. And at the end of our course, we have our EasyJet induction before we even finish at CAE. So you're already in the airline. Um, they're preparing you to go into a workplace environment and at CAE especially, uh, that's where EasyJet do all of their training at Gatwick. So you're around EasyJet pilots from day one and they have all of the EasyJet simulators there. And I think it's just a great course. It's slightly cheaper than the ATPL, which is another benefit of it. And you get your tight rating included. Um, and then obviously after 1,500 hours, it converts to an ATPL anyway. So it's just kind of an alternative to a frozen ATPL I look at it And how's the course going so far, uh, Gabriel? It's going really well. Um, we're both in the same class and we're halfway through the ground school phase, which is funny considering we only started in July, time really flies. Um, so we're in the middle of phase two of the three phases of ground school. We've got some exams coming up in January. We've just done some exams at the end of uh, September, beginning of October. So it's, it's going really well so far. I'm looking forward to flying in America. So you'll be flying in America, in, in, presumably it's Phoenix, is it? Yeah, yeah it, it is Phoenix. After we do all the ground school, we're sent out to Arizona, Phoenix, to learn to fly actual aeroplanes. And that's where we do most of our flying training before we come back here. So, Sam, are you looking forward to going to Phoenix? Absolutely, yeah. I think it's going to be the highlight of the course, to be honest. I'm looking forward. It's exciting getting the visas ready at the moment, going up to London to have the interviews in the US Embassy everything like that it's exciting i can't wait to get on a plane and get out there <laughs> so when do you start your multi-engine ir part of the course i don't know when we'll start the multi-engine part specifically because all of that is sort of um wrapped up in the in the flight training that depends a lot on various time factors how long we're out in phoenix and, and so on but overall we shouldn't be in the course any longer than two years so but presumably you get to do some flying in uh, great uk weather uh, I'm not too sure actually. I think a lot of it, the majority of the flying is done out in Phoenix. Um, there may be a bit of multi-engine stuff on the Seneca in Oxford to do, which should be um, interesting with the UK weather. And UK airspace is one of the busiest in the world, so it's going to be great to learn to fly in that and get experience before you go into the airline, especially in a place like Oxford where you have commercial aircraft as well around you all the time. So when do you expect to be in the right seat of an Airbus? Uh, well, as I say, the sort of maximum length the course could be is two years from July, so July 2024. Having said that, EasyJet are quite short, so they're going to be keen to get us through, as well as all the other courses, as fast as they can. So I think the shortest it's been done is 18 months, something like that. So certainly won't have long to wait. So you're looking forward to being in the right seat? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think it'll be early 2024 we get in the right-hand seat, which is a really short period going from... I've come straight out of A-levels, um, so going from A-levels, having two weeks off, going into CAE, and then a year later you're in the right-hand seat of an Airbus A320 flying 230 passengers around every day. 
it's definitely going to be exciting. And I'll be 19 when we finish the course as well, <laughs> which is going to be exciting. <laughs> well, I hope it's not so exciting for your passengers. Yeah, we, <laughs> we just want a nice, easy flight. You know? <laughs> well, thanks for talking to us, chaps. Have Thank a great you. show. Thank, Thank you. you.